Okay, I'm here with Philip Melke with uh, ESRI, and he's going to show some of the new developments that they've been working on that'll be of uh, great help and benefit the local governments. Thank you, Art. So, um, we've been working on a business-first approach towards designing some applications that can help help communities get started fast in, in combating some of the problems that they're facing. Uh, we've been working with uh, counties and cities and starting to understand the business problems and some of the workflows that they're working through and creating these free applications that are downloadable and immediately uh, applicable to the ArcGIS platform and ArcGIS Online to configure how how to spread GIS across the organization. We need to be able to distribute it in the right places for the people who are doing the work, who are measuring the work, and ultimately analyzing that data and understanding it in order to make decisions about what it is that they're, they're going to be doing next. So uh, first, what I want to speak about is this problem that's affecting communities all over the United States, and especially here in Ohio, where we're, where we're at here now for the NACO conference. This is the opioid epidemic, and this is a set of solutions that we produced in order to be able to help, help uh, law enforcement agencies and health and human services groups collaborate better. At this point, um, you know, there, there is a lack of communication that's occurring between these groups, and this is an opportunity to be able to use applications that are specific to be able to handle their issues, to educate the community, to be able to promote treatment options, to ultimately uh, successfully prevent opioid addiction by reducing the access of those prescriptions, uh, prescription drugs, and then also to provide effective response for our first responders who are uh, uh, deploying naloxone in the field and administering it for those that have, have uh, have uh, have uh, uh, are in the midst of an overdose here. First, this is a story map that helps express how this is impacting the community. Helps to express the maps that are are consumable by the public around very sensitive information around uh, opioid uh, deaths that have occurred or overdoses or naloxone deployments. And we've been able to anonymize the data and obfuscate and, and ultimately aggregate it here into these communities so that we can understand where uh, where some of these overdoses are occurring in, in demographic breaks, breakdowns. Now that we understand the problem, what we want to be able to do is share what the community is doing in order to be able to, uh, in order to be able to respond to this epidemic. What are our naloxone deployments, and what do they look like over a time periods from 90, 90 days prior to the most recent 90-day period, or how can the public partner? And, and, uh, and share information about drug activity that's occurring in their communities, either uh, seeing hypodermic needles in the park or, or uh, being able to, to uh, report crimes that have occurred as far as thefts from some of those med medicine cabinets as well, too. So this collective set of applications, it's about, uh, about 14 applications are free and downloadable, something that you can find on solutions.arcgs.com, or we can also help and get you started with some services or point at some partners that can help to implement this package of applications. So that ultimately it gives you the opportunity to be able to drive what you're doing to mitigate this issue with an initiative using dashboards that help to intuitively express what's occurring and measure how this problem is occurring in real time based off of information that you're receiving from the field. That same measure regularly on a weekly basis County managers and city managers are asking tough questions of their directors about what has been the recent picture for, say, in public works. How are we uh, in completing some of our work orders? Are we overdue on some of these work orders? And what does that look like? Why are we overdue? What are the uh, what are our road our issues, public safety issues that our public's responding to, and how do we express that? Or by that same vein here. Economic development is a team sport for counties, and to be able to understand statistics that are occurring in economic development zone, this is a an application that's designed to have a uh, community point out where they would like businesses to work through, and then share uh, data into that to understand what does that picture of crime look like, so that we can place and focus um, public safety resources in some of these areas in order to be able to help stem the tide of crime that's occurring in these areas and ultimately produce uh, better understanding of economic development and drive more permits, more of these business permits into some of these areas and change change the way that some of these cities are uh, are operating ultimately for the better. 
fire departments are concerned about response times and this is a way in which a city manager or a county manager can immediately understand what, are, what do our response times look like in certain sections of the community? What's our average response time and how, how does that affect it by the locations of those fire, fire stations so that we can ultimately plan where it is that we're going to be placing some fire stations. Capital improvement projects are important in understanding how much we're spending and where and why is all handled through the language of geography. It gives you the opportunity to be able to actually communicate what our plans are for the next couple of years and what we're spending in terms of investments for those plans. Ultimately, managing uh, and maintaining our roads rather than rebuilding them at five, six times the cost. We are uh, also producing a series of applications here that are intended to be able to help control our vector-borne illnesses like Zika and West Nile viruses that are collectively um, becoming more and more of a safety issue for people um, all over the United States, but specifically the Southeast and the South are seeing this all over there. And actually just recently here in Ohio as well too. There's a series of applications that are intended to be able to help communicate with the public and gather information as far as uh, where, where the report, how they can report an animal or insect issue or ultimately then review that data through a vector-borne uh, disease surveillance and control example here so that we can understand and view uh, and, and make sure that some of these service requests are going in the right direction for the people that need to be able to do this. We are mapping site treatment and how we would exclude the uh, treatment of some of the uh, some of the, uh, uh, the the spray that would be used here in, in this case, uh, ways in which we're trying to keep our uh, keep keep the uh, the treatment chemicals in the right places, but also keep them from places where cities are concerned about this. If this is either playgrounds or schools, we want to make sure that we're mitigating those vector-borne illnesses. Ways in which to empower the field dispatch them into the right places to do the work that they need to do and then ultimately a mobile application that helps us to understand all right I'm assigned to this work this is where the work is this is the context that I need to understand about that work and ultimately uh, produce a way in which to be able to, uh, uh, to to do my job to plan how it is that I'm getting there and ultimately marking that this job got done and it took this level of materials personnel and equipment in order to be able to accomplish that so collectively these issues are very similar in that it requires coordination between multiple departments and it requires coordination between the office and the field ultimately producing the information that's necessary in order to make some very large decisions. So I want to change the topic here a little bit to uh, discussing how we're incorporating drone data uh, in a new product called drone to map and so everybody's interested in drones. There are over three million drones that are in the United States right now, either on a commercial level or uh, people have, a, have an interest as well too that are personally owned drones. You can fly a city, an area, uh, and gather enough imagery to be able to produce a, a three-dimensional uh, data set that can help you uh, better uh, access high-resolution orthophotography and create this orthophotography, as well as understand what this looks like in 3D in terms of digital surface models so that you can then do uh, spot hydrography or you can understand volumetric changes and things like landfills. It's an uh, important new technology that we're really uh, becoming more and more of a part of and uh, are incorporating this information into our platform so that you can, once you've flown an area, you've captured and assembled that imagery, now you can make it accessible to everybody who needs to do the work using that high resolution detailed imagery as well too. And then, you know, at a certain point, uh, there are new ways of interacting and visualizing this information and we've been working more towards a virtual reality plugin that you can see here that gives you the opportunity to be able to visualize your data and make decisions, planning decisions or suitability, public safety decisions by actually putting yourself into that position. Teleport yourself to new places and understand what 
proposed models might look like, how they change over time, and help you to understand really what this experience is going to be like for your constituents down the road. So again, I'm Phil Melke. It's been my pleasure to speak to you. And uh, you, know, you can find a lot of this material here on our website at Esri.com. Thank you.